Thanks for watching today. We're going to be talking about keto analogs for kidney disease and what they are, uh, when they're used, how to use them, how to use them with the proper diet, and my 15 years of experience with these, using them and recommending them to thousands upon thousands of people and what the results have been. So what exactly are these keto analogs? So keto analogs are becoming very popular now because of a recent report that came out uh, late last year actually called the uh, KDOQI or Kadoq recommendations. They finally updated some good nutritional recommendations by the uh, National Kidney Foundation as, long as, as well as other organizations, medical organizations and nutrition organizations. So uh, they've been debating for a long time about what is a good diet for renal disease. And something that's been in the research and utilized in other countries for the past 30 years is a low to very low protein diet. Now when you use this type of diet, it's very therapeutic for a lot of kidney issues. The problem is because, is because you become deficient in protein. Now, if you become deficient in protein, everything is worse, okay? And we don't want that. Now, how do you follow a low to very low protein diet without becoming deficient in protein? You can take keto analogs of essential amino acids. And what these are are precursors to essential amino acids, which make up protein, which your body needs to survive. And these type of... Uh, keto analogs of essential amino acids have very little breakdown of metabolic waste. So when you eat protein, you break it down into a lot of metabolic waste, nitrogen, urea that your body has to process, get rid of, and it's your kidney has to process and get rid of it. So with these keto analogs, it produces very little to almost no waste that your kidneys have to deal with. So it allows you to stay on a very therapeutic diet of a low to very low protein diet while getting all your protein nutrition through the keto analogs. Now, this isn't really new, it's new to the United States. They've been using these for upwards of 30 years in a variety of countries around the world, and there has just been a tremendous amount of research. And I've been writing in my books for the last 12 years, uh, 10 years or so, about um, using these keto analogs to help yourself. And when I worked in a nephrology practice, the people that would come in that wanted to use those had to get them from overseas. So they had to get them from Europe, South America, uh, India, a few different places where they're manufactured. Problem is the cost. We'll talk about the issues with cost. And when you had to ship them over here, they would often get taken by customs. So uh, in the last few years, there have been a couple companies in the United States that offer these now, which is a great resource, a great option for everyone to have. Now, the low to very low protein diet is nothing new. It's been around for over 100 years um, to treat people with kidney diseases. It's gained popularity in the last few years, and now it's really going to gain a lot of popularity with the recommendations. And now, if you're looking for additional recommendations like diet, nutrition, all these other therapies from the KDO, QI, Kodoki, we have a lot of other videos that we did months ago about that. So keto analogs are to be used with the low to a very low protein diet. They're not meant to be separated and it's not a supplement that you would take without doing that diet for the most part. So keto analogs are precursors to the amino acids which make up protein which is what your body needs and you would do them with a low to very low protein diet. You would generally would follow, the amount of protein per day will vary. There's calculations that they have. We have other videos that give you the exact protein calculations and how to break it down. But roughly, you're gonna be between 22 and 40 grams of protein per day. And that does vary by each person's body weight and size. But the very low protein diet is around 22 grams to as high as low protein, which is in the 40 gram area. Now, as I mentioned, we have other videos with those protein calculations from months ago, so make sure to take a look at those. And your health has to be stable if you're gonna take these, meaning you have to have controlled diabetes, you can't be having any type of health crisis, just getting out of the hospital, anything like that. You have to have stable, good health. Uh, now, you always should talk to your healthcare team, okay? Whoever's on your team, your doctors, nephrologists, nutritionists, dietitians, functional medicine doctors, now, here's a problem you're gonna run into. When you're running any of this stuff by, as well as supplements, anything else by your nephrologist, A, they're not trained in any of this stuff, so they most likely have no idea what you're talking about. B, they're just gonna tell you, no, don't do it, just stick to these uh, drugs that I'm giving you because they don't know about it, and they're not familiar with any of the research. So, same goes for nutritionists and dietitians. Majority of them have no idea what this is or how to go about it. 
Uh, but it's always good to run it by your healthcare team. We do have health coaches here at Healthy Kidney Inc. that can help guide you, as well as some of the makers of these products have people on staff that can guide you also. So sometimes you gotta take your own, you gotta take control of your health when you're not gonna get the help you can from other people. And if you do have a doctor, a nutritionist, dietitian, holistic health practitioner who knows about these or is willing to learn, hey, that's great. You know, the more support, the better. So generally you would use these between stages three and stage five. To generally not recommend it for stage two, in some cases you can if like you have a lot of protein excretion and you're trying to be real aggressive in your care, but generally use between stages three and five. And what they've done and what I've seen with thousands of people is that you can slow down, uh, you can stop, in a lot of cases reverse the kidney disease, meaning you get an improvement in your GFR, you get a lowering of your creatinine. Uh, so I've seen this with thousands of people. A lot of the people we see too are doing multiple things. So they're being very aggressive, doing all the medications, they're doing the diets, they're doing uh, the keto analogs, they're doing supplements. So it does tend to be skewed a little bit. Uh, I don't get a lot of people who just do the diet alone, but I have had plenty of those people and they've also done extremely well. So you're looking at really good things and it only takes what, 60 to 90 days to see a difference in your blood work. You could even see a difference in 30 to 45 days. So just make sure if you do this, get tested, okay? Uh, check up on everything, do it properly, get the support, read about the products and what you can do. So the other option, uh, if you're not gonna do the keto analogs, because here's the problem with the keto analogs, okay? Uh, they are available in the US, the price, they're expensive. They always been expensive. And that's an issue for a lot of people. Um, and also getting some proper support, but there's a lot out that a lot, a lot out there now. We also offer that through our website if you decide to go with the Keto Analog product that we recommend. Um, so price is an issue. If you don't, uh, if you don't want to do it for the price, you can use essential amino acids. Okay, which. Uh, which are similar to the keto analogs, but the keto analogs are a much better form. They have a 25 to 35% higher uh, efficacy rate, so they work that much better. Uh, we do talk about the essential amino acids. We have a product along with the keto analog that we're working with a company to affiliate with their products. So you can read about that there, but those are the two options if you can do the low to very low protein diet. Keto analogs, always preferred, but if you can't for the cost, you can use essential amino acids. Not as good, but still a good option that shows benefit. And those studies go back to even before they had uh, keto analogs out. We're talking in the, um, you know, in the 80s, uh, late 80s, 90s in that area, even back to like the late 70s where they were using just essential amino acids. So you have those two options. Uh, make sure you always get your blood work done, okay? Uh, you always want to have everything checked, so you're up to date, making sure the before and after. Now, there are two products on the market when it comes to keto analogs, okay? There is Ketarina and one called Albutrix. Ketarina is a similar version to what we used to get uh, from other countries called keto sterols or keto sterols, and they're made in a lot of countries now by, by um, different uh, companies. So I've seen them in Pakistan, uh, they're in parts of Great Britain, China, Hungary, so a lot of places even in South America. In the United States, we have Ketarina and Albutrex. Ketarina is more based on those ketosterol products, which is the um, older formulation, still good, still great. Most of the people um, can use them no problem. The one issue is that they're bonded to calcium. So when we take these keto analogs, we gotta, we gotta attach them to something so they absorb, they can transport, and so they're attached to calcium. Now, one of the issues is we don't like extra calcium uh, with kidney disease. We know now that extra calcium is bad. And one of the um, precautions on the keto sterols is not to use them uh, if you have any type of calcification of the, of the arteries, certain heart disease, because you're adding more calcium in, which builds up in the arteries, it's bad for the kidney. And that's also why they've been recommended at the later stages. So if you're in the later stages, make sure you check with a cardiologist to make sure you don't have calcification of the arteries. And all anybody with kidney disease should be seeing a cardiologist. So that's the uh, one issue with the Ketarinas. They've been out longer, they're a little lower priced than the Albutrex. Now Albutrex is newer to the market. I do like the product better, that is my preference. I don't care which one you get if you're gonna do the low protein diet as long as you use the right things. 
Um, so the Albutrex is a newer product. They break it down by stages of kidney disease. It is more expensive. Um, it's also attached, they use magnesium mostly, okay, to bond to their amino acids. Now magnesium is much safer in kidney disease. Uh, we even know that having high levels of magnesium is generally isn't an issue, we're opposed to the problems with calcium. So that's the major difference, and it, it is set for the different stages of kidney disease, because we know that if you're in stage three, four, and five, your amino acid profile is gonna be different, and you're gonna need different things, different, of the, different keto analogs, of those essential amino acids in different ratios. So that's my preference for the product. Now in full disclosure, I am an affiliate of the company, meaning I get a commission if you decide to order it through the link on our website or the link down in this video. But in return, we provide product support, meaning that we're gonna help you with any questions you have, any type of product support. And Albutrex also has product support and you can meet with the owner to even do your protein calculations, get advice on diet. But we can only offer that if you click through the link at the bottom of this video in the description, it'll be in the comments and through our, uh, or our website, okay? So you can go to our website, read more about it. It's under the Pure Kidney Product for Kidney link that you'll see here. That's our essential amino acid product in the keto analogs. So uh, we can't cover everything related to keto analogs and essential amino acids of low protein diets. Those are the main points. Feel free to comment, ask lots of questions. We'll get back to you in the comments. Take a look at our other videos here because we have a lot of other videos from the past about keto analogs, uh, calculating your protein requirements uh, for using the keto analogs or calculating your protein requirements for doing a low to very low protein diet and to your best kidney health. From someone who's had uh, decades of experience with this diet, these type of products, uh, it's something that definitely can be an option. And it's not the only option and you may not be a great candidate for it. So make sure that you're a good candidate for it, but it is something that is shown to do tremendously well in so many different areas when it comes to your kidney health. So thanks for watching everybody. You're gonna see this uh, getting a lot bigger, a lot more popular that we finally got some major medical organizations on board uh, even though the research dates back 20 30 years and i've been recommending these for 15 years it's good to see that the medical community coming on board and and we're going to do big things i see really good things for all those people with kidney issues and hopefully you don't have to go what i went through kidney failure dialysis transplant and if you do have to go in that direction you'll have a much better quality of life and be much much healthier if you take care of yourself and follow other tips videos here at healthykidneyinc.com. Thanks for watching, everybody, to your best kidney health. Bye.